What's up guys? Professor Demetrius, Coach Nia. He's a coach here at our academy, a brown belt coach, soon to be black belt, but don't tell him. And uh, today we're going to be doing a lot of different variations. Specifically, we're going to do six variations on techniques that you can use when you're about to get an arm bar. You really want to extend that bad boy, but you're having trouble. Okay, that happens a lot in jujitsu. You work so hard to get to that that finishing position, that spider web, whatever it is you want to call it, but you can't get the release or you don't know what to do if you can't get the release. So today we're going to talk about six ways to do it that we like very much. There's obviously a lot more than that, but we're going to show you guys ones that we think are effective and especially for no gi. Okay, so let's just start from there. I'm not going to really get into how to arm bar, but go ahead and lie down coach, feet that way. So you guys can search YouTube for a million different ways to get to this position, okay? It happens often from the mount, it happens from guard, and then sometimes people get rolled and they get put here, okay? So what we're gonna talk about is how to release from here, but we also gotta be very aware of some of the variations that can happen as far as defense. Like sometimes the person's gonna be holding their arms with like an S grip. Some people are gonna do palm to palm, like a gable. Others are gonna do what Eric Paulson used to say, the Italian salute where they kind of go here like this. Basically, there's like a protector that's holding this arm from being extended. There's a lot of different variations that could happen. And some of the moves that I'm gonna show you are better for you know maybe one, and then others might be better for another. So we'll kind of talk about that as we go along, okay? But the first thing I'm gonna give you is actually like a bonus move, because really none of this is supposed to be super basic. It's supposed to be fancy. It's YouTube. You guys gotta enjoy it, right? But if they are palm to palm, and you feel like you're here trying to pull, I just want you guys to know that this is the least leverage that you could ever pull with is right here from the elbow, okay? I always like to pretend that this is a rusty steel bar that I need to go clink and kind of open, right? It's, if it's hard to move, you're not gonna start from the lowest point. You're gonna start from the highest point and try from there because that's maximum leverage. So what I want is I wanna pull from here. I wanna pull from Nia's wrist, not from his elbow. But you see tons of people in academies getting to here and they're just going crazy. Veins popping out of their head, they're pulling back, and it's just not working, but that's because they're here. What we run is to get over there. So again, this is kind of the bonus move. It's not even part of the six moves, but I think you guys will enjoy it. I'm gonna go ahead and lean forward, not back. That seems a little counterproductive, but I'm gonna lean forward and I'm gonna place my hand on this, this entire unit here. So I'm gonna hold on to his hands that are holding each other. Now I'm gonna see if I can kind of bring myself to the side and push his elbow into my armpit. What that allows me to do is move my hand a lot closer to his wrist. And sometimes from here, if I start to lock in and I lean back, I get a ton more leverage for the finish than if I were simply trying to extend this way. Turn a little this one, yeah? Yeah, right there. So look, you can see from here, no leverage. What I wanna do is lock this in. Sometimes I even shove the elbow itself and then go, but once I get here, there's a really good chance that I'm gonna, I'm gonna compromise that grip and get the full finish, okay? So that's one of the ones that I really like. Now, if I wanna get a little more complex with it, I feel like the next one is one of the highest percentage ones that I use, and it does also release the arm bar. So what I'm gonna do, especially no gi because I don't have a lot of grips, is I wanna start to control the person as best I can, okay? The way to do that for me is to kind of take my hands, lock them in, and make a little switch here, right? Now, if you see space, you can do it with, with the second hand like so. But sometimes they're really tight and it's hard to get the second hand through, but you already know you got at least one arm's worth of space in there. So if you wanna go like this and just kinda of shuck it through, that usually works pretty well. Next, turn this way a little. This one's gonna be best for here, okay? So next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to look to grab my partner's leg. I think in the EBI tournament, this is an option for overtime, they call it spider web. Okay, so this is a good start. It really stops the person from fully getting up. If you control the close side leg, even if they start to swing up and they get rid of this leg, they're gonna get about that far and they're gonna end up rocking back. So it's really, really hard to fully escape when the person's holding your leg, okay? But here's the thing. I wanna get rid of that protect, protector arm. His left arm is a protector, his right arm is the one I wanna kill, okay? So the idea here, is I don't want this kind of configuration because look, if I push this, it does nothing for this holding, okay? What I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna be here, I lock the leg, and I'm gonna kind of bring the leg close. And at first, I'm just gonna kind of see if I can bully it 
and just lean it back, pull a little back. Now the first chance I get, this hand over here is gonna go grab with a monkey grip. It's gonna go here, boom. And I'm gonna pull this off. When I pull this off, the protector's gone, okay? Because all that was keeping his right arm from being extended was his left arm. Now I removed his left arm, okay? Next, I'm gonna take my hand and kind of come up a little, pull back, lean, finish. Okay, one more time. So again, this is for the Italian salute type of configuration of arms, right? So I go here, boom, I lock here. Now I'm gonna reach up, pull. Very hard to stop that. And the more he extends his leg, once I get here, the more he's helping me to extend the arm that's on top. So it really doesn't make a huge difference. Now I can grab this one closer to the wrist, start to lean back and finish, okay? Some people ask me though, they say, Professor, you're kind of a big guy and you know, it might be easier for you to scoop this leg, whereas for me, I can't scoop the leg. That's fine, if you can't get it, then it's all good, but try to get tight, try to get close. You can even cross your feet here. It's a rule uh, that we try not to do from the guard, we don't cross our feet, but from the top, you can cross your feet. And then from here, you can just do the exact same thing. I can grab like this and start to pull, and the good thing about it is Nia doesn't really see that coming, you know, like obviously here he would, but because my leg is right over his face, it's really hard for him to see when I'm gonna do this. And most people don't, they just go back. So you wanna pull this way, boom, and then come up and catch the arm. So that's one of my favorite ones to kind of get the release, if this is the configuration. We'll talk in a minute more about how to do this one, which we kind of started with, right? But the next one we're gonna talk about is a reverse triangle. And this one's like, to me, it's, it's very powerful. If you guys are having uh, a bigger opponent in your situation here and you can't release their arm, you might want to try a triangle because the legs are the equalizers. They're very strong. So let's back up a little bit this way, coach. Boom, right here. So on this one, I find that anything where the hands are connected, gable grip, S grip, whatever, it's usually pretty good, okay? Now what I'm going to start to do is maybe begin the release that we talked about earlier, but for whatever reason, I just can't get it to break, okay? So now I'm gonna take my high leg, the one that's over the face, and I'm basically gonna thread it toes first through his arm. Why toes first? Because if I go with my heel first like this, he might feel that coming and lock in. And yes, of course, you can start to push, but we've already let go of the head now, and it's kind of a dangerous situation. There's a lot of space to move. So I don't wanna go heel first and give away what I'm doing. If I go toes first and he starts to bite down, it doesn't matter. My foot's already through. Once the toes make it through, the rest of the foot's gonna get through as well. Now, turn this way. I'm gonna throw my knee over his head like this. He's still got his arms connected, that's not a big deal. And now what I wanna do is I really wanna butt scoot. I'm using this back hand to kind of butt scoot in and I'm gonna start picking this up like this, okay? Now I'm gonna reach for my leg and I'm gonna start to pull it back like so. I bring it up skyward, kind of hook underneath his neck and then I'm gonna lock a triangle and squeeze, okay? It's a very powerful choke, and you know, if a person is more focused on the arms, this could be a fantastic option, right? So one more time, we're here, locking in. It's not going well, I'm pulling. Any kind of opening that we can make with the pool is actually a good thing. I know that I said earlier, we're not gonna try to finish from here, and that's true. But if that little pull or the attempted pull opens up the circle whatsoever, then the toes usually can get right through, okay? Now I open this way, and I need to move in, okay? If I don't move in, his head might not come off the ground and then I can't do it. So I gotta move in. Now I grab my shin and I start to kind of turn the corner and hook skyward. I lock my leg under my other knee, folding my foot behind his back and I can push his arm and squeeze. A lot of people reach down for the legs. That's pretty nasty when you kind of, you know, compress them. But I find that if I just take my hand at the end, let me thread through, boom, boom. This does the trick. It kind of finishes what, you know, it cuts the carotid artery on that side and it's usually a, a good option, okay? So that would be move number two, right? Let's move back this way. So now let's talk a little bit about a compression lock. A compression lock is a great option, but you gotta check the rules. What do I mean? Tournaments have different rules. If you're training in the gi, um, I wanna say that a lot of the lower belt divisions, like white and blue, I don't think they're gonna allow people to do compression locks. But no gi is a different ball game. A lot of times no gi is all good. So check with that. Also check at your academies. You don't want your professors, you know, getting upset at you for doing something you shouldn't have done. So ask them how they feel about compressions before you guys try to do them. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I have the bottom arm in 
And now I'm gonna thread back to the top one like we talked about earlier. And then I wanna to start to threaten the pull, right? So I'm pulling, I'm, I'm giving it an attempt, but this guy is so strong, he's able to keep his arms pretty much glued to his chest, and I'm not even able to make progress in opening up that circle at all, okay? So I'm here like this, I'm yanking, it's not happening. I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna capture my leg. If you're having any trouble with that, you wanna bring your leg to your hand, not your hand to your leg. So you're gonna go like this, boom, lock it in, okay? Now I'm gonna slide this down to the thinnest point of my wrist. Okay, so I want his forearm to be folded right over the thinner part of my forearm as well. And now my bottom leg, as I'm pulling, he thinks I want the extension, I want him to pull back. And now I take my leg and I throw it over the top like this. Once I cross it, I turn and I do a compression here. You see how Nia's already about to tap. All I have to do is pull and squeeze. And that's gonna give me a nasty uh, submission on his forearm, bicep, this whole area, this compression lock. So this one, you gotta be really careful, guys, because some people don't even know what they're in and they have to tap, but they don't tap and they can get hurt, so be careful. All right, so one more time. You can't do this with the bottom one. I mean, you can, but I prefer it with the top. So I take my top hand, I thread it through this needle, put my hand over my own leg, okay? I still wanna sell the idea that I want this, okay? That way he pulls it to his chest, and then when I see clearance, bottom leg over the top, like this, and then I fall to the side and lock. You can also do this from holding the leg. So for example, if I was here, and I did have this type of, say, spider web position, but maybe he doesn't have the, uh, you know, the rear naked choke type grip, or whatever it is we did earlier, then I could do it from here as well. So I'm here, I'm trying to lean. He thinks I'm just trying to go for the arm bar. One, two, and you can see how it's already game over right there. Um, the only way to kind of escape that that I know of is he has to anticipate it. Some guys can get good at pushing their arm through. So if I start going like this, and he finds a way to push his arm through, that's cool, but he's also gonna be giving me the ability to kind of arm bar him here, here, whatever, you know? So the idea is that it's a bad position for him either way. All right, so one last time, we're here, bottom arm in, top arm in, hand on my leg, sell, 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 fold, scoop, lock, and finish, okay? Very tight submission right there. All right, now the next one we're gonna talk about, number four, this one's what I call the X break, okay, the X break. And I don't mean break the arm, we're not breaking nobody's arm, be nice, but the idea is to break the grip, okay? And sometimes you see people who are taking their bottom heel, usually the bottom heel, and they're wedging it right inside the bicep, and they might be able to make some progress. Now, if you decide to do this, there's nothing wrong with it, I've gotten a lot of arm bars that way, but you wanna be pretty abrupt with your kick out. You don't wanna go steady. If I put my foot in like this, and I start to slowly press, he's gonna slowly get stronger too. He's kind of accommodating to whatever the pressure is that I'm giving him. But what I like to do sometimes is just kind of blast. So sometimes you can go here and pretend, pretend, and then boom, boom, and give it a couple good ones and see if you can release it. But you'd be surprised how strong the arms feel. Some people are really, really strong, so I prefer the X-Braid. So what I do is I take my top leg usually, because it gives me more options to thread it, I put it through like this, okay? Next, I'm gonna take the bottom leg and do the exact same. So now this is very similar to an X guard, okay? So now I'm holding, and I can see that his palm is on top here, the one that I have, and his other one's on bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it kind of north, and at the same time, boom, I push out my legs. So now I have double the strength of the first one, right? So I push out the X, lock in, and I don't really have to change anything. I can just lay back and get the finish. Okay, one more time, so we're here. Bottom arms threaded in this situation. Really wouldn't matter, you could do it either way. But the idea is to kind of open up that circle. One, two, and don't just pull, okay? Unhook, so if the palms are, show your hands a little. This one's on top, I'm gonna push that one that way and push his other one the other way. So I'm here, kind of hold, boom, like that. And then from this position, switch it to the wrist, lay back, and get the finish, okay? So one more time here. Locking in, foot goes through, one, two, pay attention to the type of lock, wouldn't hurt to get a little closer, and then, boom, quick push and turn, okay? That could be an awesome way to release as well, okay? The next one, number five, this one's kind of old school, but I still think it might be new school. This is called the Gogo Plata. It's completely changing the plan to a different submission, which is a choke, okay? Let's turn this way in. So on this one, 
I'm here, and usually I like to do this with my bottom hand in, and this one doesn't matter quite as much how he holds. It can be done from many of the different holds. But right now, Neil's just gonna have, you know, this type of grip here. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna move my bottom south. So right now, I'm pretty much on a 90 degree angle with him. I'm gonna move a little this way, boom. Now, I'm gonna take my top leg, and I'm gonna start to hook like this, right under his chin. And now, my plan is to get up. So I wanna put the weight on my left knee, but my foot is gonna hook. My shoelaces are hooking right around his neck. I start to get up like this, and I put my hand directly on my leg, and I pressure it down. Okay, so this is going to create a pretty nasty choke, and completely changes his priorities. Because priority was his arm. Now it's going to be his neck, and we can even mess around going back and forth and reattacking the arm. But usually this one's legal and in competition, okay? So here, bottom arm is in. I'm kind of holding him down. Sometimes here I even like to open his head up a little bit with my leg, okay? Now I put the hand on the ground. Boom, lock. Now I put my hand right on my heel. Some people will reach back and try to grab their toes. If you wanna do that, you can, but I feel like the ground's doing a pretty good job of keeping him there anyways. So I might as well just put my hand behind and start to lean in pressure. That was pretty nasty, on you? <laughs> Not a fun position to be in, but it's a great position to know, right? So last one, we're here, extension, no go. Maybe a little pull down, open his head a little bit. Oh, block. Now from here, pressure and finish. I'm trying to be super nice on the last one. So that would be option number five, okay? Now, one more, option number six. This one looks a little fancy, but it's really not that fancy. It's pretty good. So this is basically switching sides. From, from going for his right arm, I'm gonna switch things and try to go for his left arm. So we'll change the angle a little. And this one, guys, in my opinion, works best when he locks his bicep. Okay, so again, we're back to having a protector and then the one that we want to attack. And right now the protector is doing a pretty good job. Okay, so instead of taking my hand and threading it through this way and maybe going for the previous release, I'm going to take my hand and shoot it right underneath his arm. Now don't forget that from here, you can sometimes tap them with Americanas here. There's even ways of kind of re-gripping here and going for Americana. There's some other stuff in that ballpark. But right now, we're gonna use this to change sides. The good thing about this is that the side I'm on is the side I usually want, and the other one protects that side. But when I switch to Nia's left arm, I'm not gonna give him a chance to make the switch himself and protect the second hand. This one should be the one I end up getting with no obstruction. So I'm here like this, boom, I'm trying to pull. Okay, I really wanna sell, I like selling stuff, right? I'm selling it, selling it. Now, I go inside, and I pull here. Now it's about really kind of getting stingy, bringing that arm to me. Now right now, everything is too congested here for him to be able to unlock anything. Now my hand in the south is no longer used, so put it on the ground. Now the high leg is gonna fold back like this, just, just over his face. And now the goal is gonna be to push up like this. Now once I'm here, I'm gonna make a knee switch. See how my left knee is down, right knee is up? I'm gonna change, boom. And now if you turn a little knee up, you can see that I'm still so focused on his right arm, but his left arm is right over the top. So that's perfect for me. Now I'm gonna go pinky side down, putting some pressure. Swing and finish, boom, like that, okay? Let's do it again, feed it back this way. Let's see if we can get a different angle. Okay, so we're here. Sell, sell, sell. Make this hand available. Scoop and pull. Hand on the floor, back. Up, hold this arm so he doesn't make any switches. Change, catch, okay? Maybe one more time, let's do one more. Sorry, Nia, I don't usually get this many arm locks in one day, but hey, I'm enjoying it. Okay, so here, boom, pull, scoop, pull. It's important that he can't make that switch back, okay? If he did it right now, it'd be suicide anyways. He took this hand out thinking that I'm going the other way, yeah, he's giving me the first one, come on. He's not gonna make that switch until later regardless. So hold the top one, pull it, hand on the floor, up, switch, finish. Okay, so that one's gonna take a little practice and it's worth the practice. It's good for gi, it's good for no gi, um, but that would be number six. So guys, we have kind of the basic way to release it 
And then we've got six powerful ways to kind of go a different path or, you know, switch it up to where maybe you can confuse that person that you normally have trouble catching. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Um, we're planning on doing a lot more content like this for you guys very soon. So please leave us a comment, um, a like, and subscribe to our channel. And also let us know if you guys would like to see anything uh, specific in the future. All right, guys, thank you very much. And we'll see you very soon.